Hello tiny house and off-grid people. Today I want to have a chat with you about dangerous vegetables. Yep, these vegetables, although they can have pretty flowers and gorgeous fruit, for one reason or another, they can be very dangerous. Kidney beans, for example. Green tomatoes. Green potatoes. The moth plant, which can be easily confused with the choco. All can be very dangerous to your health. Well, today I've come up here to some farmland up above the town where I live. Um, I've had to dub over this because the wind noise was quite terrible. But I've come up here looking for a plant called Maline. And Maline grows on the side of the road, it grows on riverbanks, it grows in any rough ground. Now here we've got some first year growth Maline. You've probably seen it. It's known as cowboy's toilet paper. Here in New Zealand we call it bushman's toilet paper. The first year leaves are soft and wide and very usable for, as the name suggests. But another thing that uh, Maline has, another use that it has, is people smoke the leaves. And they use it as an alternative to tobacco, because they feel like they're still smoking something. But believe it or not, it's actually an expectorant. It helps decongest a smoker's lungs, so it's very therapeutic for people who are trying to quit smoking. In its second year, it grows seed heads that can be quite tall, but we've just had a mower come along here, as you can see, and the mower has taken off all the lovely seed heads that were here last time I drove past a week ago, but I've just managed to find three seed heads that were too low for the mower to capture. And the reason I want to show you the seed heads is because hundreds of years ago the American Indians would gather these seeds, dry them, crush them to a powder, and they would spread that powder on the surface of ponds and slow-moving rivers and it works as a narcotic it actually completely stones the fish and every fish living in that body of water will float to the surface and become an easy capture for people who are in need of a good feed. Now it's not something that they would do regularly because it would deplete the fish stocks. They were very responsible with it and they only used it in dire situations. Nowadays, of course, our government has decided that we can't think for ourselves and they've made the plant illegal. It grows here, there and everywhere, but you're not to touch it. Now this brings us to number two on our list, rhubarb. This is rhubarb growing in my own garden, which I like to have with vanilla ice cream, custard, goes really well with blueberries and other fruit, but the leaves, don't go near the leaves, they're very poisonous. And here we have a choco vine. Chocos, gorgeous. I've got quite a story to tell you about chocos. Chocos were the staple food for many people during the depression years because they could be added to almost any meal and would extend that meal much like potatoes but it grows like a weed it grows nearly everywhere uh, it's a Mexican native I believe I think in Mexico it's known as the chayote but in New Zealand and Australia we call it the choco and I use it extensively in my cooking but it's not to be confused with the moth plant the fruits look very, very similar, and I do believe that the only difference is in the shape of the leaves. 
From what I can gather in the US, fried green tomatoes is a bit of a thing if you go by the movie of the same name. But I've recently learnt that eating too many green tomatoes is a bad thing. It actually contains a neurotoxin which can make you very, very dazed and confused and will make small children and babies very sick. So please be careful eating fried green tomatoes or green tomato chutney. It's to be had in moderation. And while we're on the subject of green, potatoes. I think we all know that eating the green portion of potatoes is a bad thing. That green is caused when potatoes grow very close to the surface and they're affected by the sunlight. It's a protection system made by the plant. The green contains uh, an insecticide that will protect the potato if it is exposed to the air where insects can get into it. Unfortunately that insecticide called solanine is also very very toxic to humans and can kill especially in children. Anybody with a low body weight can be severely affected by eating the green portion of potatoes. Easily fixed. If it's all green throw it away. If it's got a green portion on it cut it off. How, how many of you knew that baked beans could be such a bad boy? Red kidney beans need to be soaked for up to eight hours and they have to be cooked for the appropriate amount of time because raw or undercooked red kidney beans have a toxin in them called lectin which is has effects on the human digestive system very similar to food poisoning. You would get nausea, headaches, stomach cramps, diarrhea, it's not a good thing and this can be brought on by as few as three or four beans. Won't kill you, but it'll put you off beans for a while. And the last thing on my list of dangerous foods is the gorgeous banana passion fruit. Now they have a beautiful, beautiful flower, they have a sweet fruit, um, kids eat them all the time, but you've got to pick them at the right time. If they're not yellow, walk away. I've been caught like this. If they're not a nice bright yellow, it's like the kidney beans. They will give you one hell of a sore stomach simply because there's some chemical in there to protect them from insects and predators. And it's only when they're ripe that their levels of that chemical drop away and they become edible. So, Please be careful. There's a lot of good food out there, but you've just got to wise yourself up a little bit when you're foraging for your own food rather than relying on supermarkets. Now, me and my ADHD, I've just remembered one other thing. Remember earlier in the vid, I was talking about the Moline plant on the side of the road, and I said that the mower had come along and uh, chopped off the seed heads. Well that got me thinking about this. This is also from a mower. This is from the giant extinct mower bird that we had in New Zealand. I found this bone um, about 20 years ago in a caving system, washed way down into the bottom of a caving system. It was uh, two hours from the surface till I got down to this massive low cavern that was um, a graveyard of bones of all the different animals that had died and had washed down into the bottom of the cave. Some were so old that they were beginning to turn into fossils. They had uh, lime calcium deposits all over them. They were the ones right down the very, very back. But um, as you got closer to the mouth of this cavern, which was two hours underground, uh, the bones were fresher. And then amongst them, I found this perfectly preserved 
mower bone. This one's from the Moa Dinornis, Gi Gi Dinornis Gigantica, which was the biggest of the mowers and stood when fully erect to three meters, so 10 feet tall in the uh, feet and inches. So I just thought I'd show you that. It's something that I've had for many years and it just sits on a shelf in my little house and seldom gets brought down, but now the world's seen my mower bone.